from 1942 to 1943 at the University of Munich in Germany, a resistance group called the White Rose was formed and in action, passively or silently opposing the Nazis and Hitler's genocidal attack known as the Holocaust. The group's resistance consisted of distributing a series of leaflets filled with information about what was happening, why it was wrong, and how citizens should resist. An extremely valuable member to the White Rose was 21-year-old Sophie Scholl. Sophie made a large, positive impact on the group. Her role in the White Rose was helping to prepare and distribute the leaflets. She showed courageousness, bravery, and selflessness while doing what she knew would have consequences, but knew was right. Sophie Scholl, together with the White Rose, took a stand in history against Hitler and the Nazis by attempting to change the minds and hearts of apathetic German citizens during the Holocaust and setting an example for silent protest despite risks. They continue to serve as an inspiration and example of how every voice, no matter how small, can make a difference. How can we expect righteousness to prevail when there is hardly anyone willing to give himself up individually to a righteous cause? Such a fine sunny day and I have to go, but what does my death matter if through us thousands of people are awakened and stirred into action? These were the final words of 21-year-old Sophie Scholl on the day she was executed by the German Gestapo on February 22, 1943. But what led to this tragic execution, which included Sophie's brother Hans and their close friend from their university, Christoph Probst? Sophie Scholl was born in Forchtenberg, Germany on May 9, 1921. She was the fourth of six children. When Hitler rose to power in Germany in 1933, Sophie was initially unaffected by the new regime, but her father, Robert Scholl, and her older brothers were quite critical of the Nazis. This left a strong impression on young Sophie. When she was 12, Sophie joined a pseudo-Nazi organization called the League of German Girls, as required by the government. At first, Sophie liked the activities of the group and was promoted to squad leader. Her enthusiasm soon faded, however, as her conscience began to conflict with the ideas that were slowly beginning to be controlled by the Nazis. Many things, including the arrest of one of her Jewish friends, led Sophie to take a much more critical attitude toward the Nazi regime. Her opposition towards Hitler and the Nazis grew, and her own views became clearer. She soon had the same opinion of opposition as the rest of her family, including her father who had been arrested after being caught making a critical remark about Hitler in 1942. Her religious Christian faith helped Sophie develop an even stronger opposition to the Nazis because it emphasized the basic dignity of every human being. She became a kindergarten teacher in 1940 after graduating from her secondary school, later spent six months in the National Labor Service, and finally ended up enrolling at the University of Munich in May of 1942 along with her brother Hans. Hans and Sophie became associated with a group of fellow students and friends with similar beliefs in opposition towards the Nazi Party's actions and they became the core of the resistance group, the White Rose. The group included Sophie and Hans Scholl, Alexander Schmorel, Willy Graf, Christoph Probst, and their professor, Kurt Huber. The main goal of the White Rose was to bring the apathy of German citizens into the light. They knew that so many people were following their charismatic leader simply in fear, fear of being killed. The government was so tight during this time that even a slightly critical comment could get you arrested. Any form of opposition would have to be silent, if not assisted by military forces. So to avoid this, because they were afraid, the unaffected citizens may have just chosen to do nothing, to ignore it all, pretend it wasn't happening, even if most of them were against it. Sophie Scholl and the rest of the members were horrified by this apathy, appalled that thousands of people were dying and so many blocked it out. They also felt that Hitler's and the Nazis' actions were morally wrong, and something had to be done. They had to take a stand. Together, Sophie and the White Rose created and distributed a series of leaflets, six in total. These publications were filled with information regarding the terrible things that were happening in the country and encouragement to join the men in the silent resistance or even take up arms and fight back. They also put in many strong supported claims about the state of the government and country during this time of suffering. They expressed their own viewpoints in a society where opinions opposing that of the government's leaders were considered treason and were punishable. Sophie knew that many citizens had the same opinions as them. They may have even disagreed with Hitler's genocide and maybe even desired the same resistance and opposition. But fear kept them hidden, in denial. Sophie and the other members knew what had to be done. Their goal was to wake up German citizens with their leaflets and get them stirred into action. The first leaflet began. 
Nothing is so unworthy of a civilized nation as allowing itself to be governed without opposition by an irresponsible clique that has yielded to base instinct. It is certain that today every honest German is ashamed of his government. Who among us has any conception of the dimensions of shame that will befall us and our children when one day the veil has fallen from our eyes and the most horrible of crimes, crimes that infinitely outdistance every human measure, reach the light of day? The first four leaflets were written between March and July of 1942. The authors were Hans Scholl and Alexander Schmorl, though it is possible that Sophie Scholl and Christoph Probst contributed to the text. The recipients of the leaflets were chosen from telephone directories and were usually medics, scholars, and pub owners. Sophie's role in the distribution and making of the leaflets was getting stamps and paper, handling the group's funds, and helping with distribution. The group learned that the Gestapo was less likely to stop and search a woman, so they began counting more and more on Sophie to distribute the leaflets. However, Sophie still needed to be careful because buying too much paper or too many stamps at one place would arouse suspicion. Together, Sophie and the other members of the White Rose worked day and night, cranking a noisy hand-operated duplicating machine, always risking getting caught. The finished leaflets were put in envelopes, stamped and mailed from different major cities in southern Germany. All of the members took great risk in traveling to different cities to mail stacks of leaflets from undetectable locations. Trains were constantly patrolled by the military police, and if a person was caught traveling without official marching papers, the consequences could be fatal. The police demanded the identification papers of any male of military service age. This is another reason why Sophie was valuable and strongly relied upon to deliver leaflets when traveling to other cities. The leaflets were distributed in a number of different ways. They were placed in telephone books in public phone booths, mailed to professors and students, taken by courier to other universities for distribution, or simply hand-delivered at the university at night or thrown off the balconies in stacks. Although the pamphlets were the main method of opposition by the White Rose, another resistance action the group members took was graffiti. On February 4th, 8th, and 15th, they painted huge slogans on walls throughout Munich, including at the university. They were statements such as, Freedom, Down with Hitler, and Hitler the Mass Murderer. This was also an extremely risky act that could have had fatal consequences had they been caught. On February 22, 1943, while throwing stacks of leaflets off the balcony of the atrium into the courtyard at their university, Sophie and Hans were spotted by Jacob Schmidt, a janitor. They were arrested by the Gestapo, and the two of them were put on trial and convicted of treason. During her trial, Sophie exclaimed to the judge, Roland Friesler, shocking everyone in the courtroom, Somebody, after all, had to make a start. What we wrote and said is also believed by many others. They just don't dare to express themselves as we did. Sophie and Hans were finally sentenced to death, along with Christoph Probst. The Scholl siblings were granted one final meeting with their family before their execution. Christoph, Hans, and Sophie had one last meeting as well before Sophie was led to the guillotine. The three of them were executed within just hours of their trial. Throughout her trial and to her death, Sophie remained calm and courageous. She was described by one of the witnesses as she was escorted to her death, without turning a hair, without flinching. It is difficult to know exactly how many people were influenced by the work of Sophie Scholl and the White Rose. However, the example they set and the risks they took were enough to inspire thousands and get many citizens to begin taking action against Hitler's genocide. After Sophie's execution, leaflets were smuggled into allied countries such as Great Britain and the USA. The Royal Air Force reprinted five million copies of the sixth leaflet and dropped them over German cities. The sixth leaflet implored German youth to take a stand, saying, The name of Germany is dishonored for all time if German youth does not finally rise, take revenge, and atone, smash its tormentors, and set up a new Europe of the spirit. The leaflets were also spread throughout Germany and Nazi-controlled Europe, and were even smuggled into concentration camps, bringing hope to those who couldn't escape the Nazi brutality. On August 2, 1943, the New York Times published an editorial about the White Rose resistance. The article ended with the following quote, These Munich students, few or many, representative or otherwise, rose gloriously, protesting in the name of principles which Hitler thought he had killed forever. In years to come, we too may honor them. <laughs>